In this video, I want to explore the question, is the set of rational numbers under its addition and multiplication a complete ordered field? We already know that Q is an ordered field, and so the only question is, is whether or not, whether or not Q satisfies the completeness axiom. And the completeness axiom for Q would state, if S is a non-empty subset of Q that is bounded above in Q, then there has to be a rational number Q such that the rational number is equal to the soup. And um, the answer to this question is going to be no. Q is not a complete field, and the way we're going to establish that answer is that we are going to find a counterexample. We are going to find a counterexample that shows Q does not satisfy the completeness axiom. In other words, I need to find a non-empty set that is bounded above in Q and does not have a soup that belongs to Q. Well, the set that we're going to look at is going to be this set. I'm going to look, let S be the set of all rational numbers such that uh, the rational number is going to be bigger than zero and its square is going to be less than two. And my claim is that S is a non-empty subset of the rational numbers and S is bounded above inside the set of rational numbers, but the soup of S does not exist inside the field of rational numbers. In other words, there is no soup as long as we're demanding that the soup be a rational number. So let's look at the various parts of this claim one at a time. So the first thing that we need to do is that we need to show that S is not the empty set. This is not very hard. I know that one is a rational number. I know that one is indeed bigger than zero. And I know that one squared is equal to one, which is less than two. And this collection of facts together says that one is indeed inside our set S. So S is indeed not empty. The next thing that I need to do is I need to show that S is bounded above inside the field Q. Now this is also not very hard, but it is based on a, a, a fact from uh, lower mathematics. So one thing that I want to do is I want to recall something about the square root function. If I know that A, a if I know that zero is less than A and A is less than B, uh, then that is enough for me to conclude that the positive square root of A is going to be less than the positive square root of B. And a quick reminder about what the um, graph of the square root function looks like will suffice for justifying this. The square root function looks like this. And so uh, clearly, if I have A here and B here, the square root of A is the y-coordinate of that, and the square root of B is the y-coordinate of this, and square root of B is above square root of A. So this particular thing is true for positive real numbers. Let's make a note. I know that x squared is less than 2, and I know that 2 is less than 4. So clearly, x squared is going to be less than 4, and that is going to tell me that the square root of x squared is less than the square root of 4, and that's going to tell me that x is less than 2 since 
x being positive implies that the square root of x squared is equal to x. So what we now have is that x is less than 2 for all of the x's inside set S. So 2, which is a rational number, is an upper bound for S inside the field Q. The remaining question, of course, is looking at the soup. So now I want to look at the question, why does S not have a soup inside the field Q? Um, there is a short answer that uses what we know about R. Uh, we know that uh, in R, the soup of this set would be the square root of 2. And the square root of 2 is clearly not a rational number. So if a was equal to the soup of s and a was a rational number, then set s would have two soups inside of the real numbers. Now, this is kind of a hand-waving thing because I haven't really established that you couldn't have a soup inside Q that was not the same as the soup inside of the set of real numbers. But this is basically the guts of what's going to go on in the longer answer. So let me now look at the more proper long answer. And what we're going to notice here is this. If I pick any rational number and that rational number is less than the square root of 2 inside of R, uh, then what I want to notice is that um, R squared is certainly going to be less than 2. But I also want to notice that we have this kind of a number line. We have square root of 2 here, and we have r here. And there is space between r and the square root of 2. And I know that between any two real numbers, there lies a rational number. So in other words, I can come here and I can say there's always going to be another rational number that I'm going to call r hat with r strictly less than r hat, and r hat, because it's rational, is strictly less than the square root of 2. So here's where our long answer is going to wind up uh, how it's going to wind up being written. If R was the soup of S inside Q, there is going to be an R hat inside Q with R less than R hat less than the square root of 2 by density, but then r hat squared is also going to be less than the square root of 2 squared, which means r hat squared is going to be less than 2. And so we have two things. r hat clearly belongs to set S, and r hat is bigger than r, which was supposed to be the soup of S inside the rational numbers. And that says R 
is not equal to the soup of the set S. And because we can keep repeating this argument with no matter which rational number we pick, it turns out that we can say S has no soup inside of the rational numbers. That if you look at thinking about something being the soup of S inside the rational numbers, it's always going to be less than the square root of 2, and so there's always going to be another R hat up here that belongs to S, and that's the contradiction to this guy being the soup. So the upshot is Q under its plus n times is not a complete ordered field.